ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, often imitated but never duplicated. A news show for those of you interested in quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and those of you who just want to recap some of the week's events, maybe have a little fun and learn a little grammar. Uh, we have a selection of headlines for you this week, as well as the usual meme of the week. And uh, we're going to be doing a cognitive conjecture. However, I was thinking of, of flip-flopping one week doing something called cognitive conspiracy, or perhaps conspiracy conjecture, and then the next week do uh, cognitive conjecture. Because this week we got a special one where I'm going to look at the mysterious death of of a man named Philip Schneider, who is a geologist that once worked for the government and passed away in 1996. But that's later on in the program. This edition covers the week ending October 15th, 2022. So let's jump into these headlines. First headline comes from ABC News. We have Israeli settlers rampage in Palestinian town in West Bank. Palestinian officials say a group of Jewish settlers has rampaged through a town in the northern West Bank. As you can see here, we have a couple adjectives, which are tangible contract, something you can put in your syntax notebook, adjectives, must always be tangible contract. Culminating in the pronoun rampage, and as we all may or may not know, but if you're watching this uh, for a second time, third time, fourth time, then you know that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, which in this case we have in as an adverb. Palestinian adjective coloring town into a pronoun, again, followed by an adverb in, modifying West into an adjective, which is coloring bank into a pronoun. Then we start off again with uh, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, 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 adjective in the past tense with rampaged, through, which is a pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, or I'm sorry, adverb, Adjective, adjective pronoun. Bank is the last pronoun, the final pronoun in that word group. And I'd like to point a couple things out here. I've put the particles of negation in yellow. So any vowel in front of a consonant is considered a particle of negation using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology. As well as any suffix or prefix, which negates the now space, which ed is a past tense suffix. So therefore, I've marked that. And I've also allowed for it in the syntax, which if you look at the syntax key up in the uh, upper starboard side of your screen, you will see that eight signifies past tense. Nothing much to say about this uh, other than what I just said grammatically. And th this has been going on for a very long time. It's very similar to, the, to what happened with North America. There were already people a people, a culture, or several cultures living here, and then another culture came in and forced that culture out and basically committed genocide upon them, which we just had uh, Columbus Day the other day, which celebrates that, I guess. Um, this is very similar to that, because when, when you talk about Israeli settlers, you're talking about people settling a land that has already been settled. There's already people there, and they're coming in by force and pushing the natives out. Same situation. Um, and again, you know, it comes down to religion. A lot of atrocities in history have been committed by people who believe in this types of things, and doing it in the name of their particular God, and uh, this is no exception. I better move on before I get in trouble. Next headline comes from NBC News. Jamaica bans broadcast of music and TV deemed to glorify drugs or crime. 
The government said the ban is meant to cut back on material that could give the wrong impression that criminality is an acceptable... Sorry. Could give the wrong impression that criminality is an accepted feature of Jamaican culture and society. Wow. Okay. So aside from the fictitious conveyance of grammar here, it looks as though the Jamaican government is worried about how the rest of the world or society looks at them. But even still, I mean, if you're over 18, you can make your own choice. And really, what's been put out on YouTube and everything, think about this, ladies and gentlemen, think about it logically. I always bring it back to the logic and the grammar. When you look at what is being promulgated, what is being marketed on YouTube, all social media platforms, and you see what is being taken off, you see what has problems and what doesn't, that tells you exactly what those people, those corporations that own these platforms, what their agenda is. It tells you exactly what it is. You don't have to look too hard. Now this... Jamaica bans broadcast of music and TV deemed to glorify drugs or crime. Now, I'm not sure if they're referring to that uh, green leafy plant because that is not a drug. That is a plant, right? Drugs are things that human beings make. They're artificial, by my knowledge. So I can't see how they would be able to ban Bob Marley, for instance, or Toots Mayhall, right? Come on now. Oh, by the way, short note. You see, I didn't syntax the part with the uh, quotations mark there because that falls under the four-corner rule. It's not on the page. North Korea tests a missile and flies warplanes near border with South. South Korea dispatched its own warplanes in a show of force as the North appeared intent on keeping tensions high on the Korean Peninsula. All right, aside from the fictitious conveyance of grammar and the modification taking place in the grammar, I would be remiss if I don't throw my two cents in here. You have a country like North Korea who basically, in the eyes of the media, is evil, right? For whatever reason. And then you have that country. It's basically independent of other countries. Sort of looked at, you know, as as, as a negative type of country. Much like Russia is looked at right now. So, if other if all things are equal, and everybody has missiles, and everybody tests missiles. What what is the big deal if they fire a missile or fly warplanes near borders? It really, I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, you have countries. Well, I'm not even going to get into it, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I I better stop right now uh, because I am aware of the guidelines of this platform, and I've already pushed it a little bit too far here. But what we see is a lot of uh, we see a lot of tangible contract adjectives, pronouns. Um, interesting uh, scenario here where it says near border with south. You have near, which is non-tangible contract adverb, which may puzzle a few people, but I highly recommend you looking that up in your etymology dictionary and you'll see exactly why I syntax that as non-tangible contract. And you see the particles of negation and so on and so forth. And we got ourselves a dangling participle verb here with South. Next headline comes from NPR. Biden is rethinking the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia after OPEC cuts. Really? This is interesting in and of itself because... From what I understand, we, we maintain, we being the 
past tense United States, maintain diplomatic relationships with Saudi Arabia. Everything we do is hinged upon what? Petro, right? So aren't they at all concerned that this is a country that cuts people people's heads off still? Like in public? For, I mean, I guess public executions and beheadings, that type of thing is okay. But uh, when OPEC cuts something, I don't know if OPEC's cutting heads off or whatever. Maybe they're cutting prices. I don't know, which it doesn't really specify here. Money's the most important thing with these people. I don't know how many times I got to say it. Next headline. <laughs> planet money why the u.s might not win the global economy without canada and mexico we got a pronoun followed by adverb adjective pronoun adverb verb adverb adjective pronoun adverb verb conjunction dangling participle verb so the way that works there is we have without which is non-tangible contract adverb modifying both canada and mexico into verbs the conjunction is a neutral condition of state, hence the labeling of the number zero. It's just a neutral bridge between the two verbs, Canada and Mexico. Conjunctions do not modify, nor are they modified. They don't perform as breaks in continuance of the evidences or anything like that. It's just a neutral bridge, neutral condition of state. I didn't know that the global economy was a game. And I didn't know it was a team sport. But I guess it is. And another interesting thing, if you think of Canada and Mexico, and then you have U.S., if someone says, you know that song, I forget who the artist is, I'm proud to be an American. You can be a Canadian and be proud to be an American. You can be a Mexican and be proud to be an American. You can be a Brazilian and be proud to be an American. It's all the Americas. Next headline, Putin calls the attack on a key bridge to Crimea a terrorist act. Adjective pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun, adverb in the future tense, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. So the bridge that you see in the picture there was blown up. That's a key uh, passageway for... Crimea for bringing in goods and so on and so forth. And Putin is calling it a terrorist act. Well, I'm pretty sure there is some acting going on in this scenario. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of terror in that scenario, especially for those uh, poor individuals who were there when it happened. So, yeah, I agree. Next up, we have our weekly syntax lesson, and it comes from our friends over there at sot.net the world for people who link and this one actually comes from the sot.net website uh, that doesn't give a particular author but this headline reads newsreel <laughs> news no contract Nord Stream sabotage and the end of the western world how are we going to syntax this one ladies and gentlemen well, the way I teach syntax, and this is the most efficient, accurate, and effective way to do it, is to start at the end, work backwards. Now, first, let's go through and look at some particles of negation here. We got that vowel in front of a consonant, another vowel in front of a consonant, vowel in front of a consonant. Since they capitalized that, we'll throw that one in there, too. So here we go. Starting at the end, the first question we ask ourselves, is this word tangible contract or is it non-tangible contract? Well, I have a tangible contract with what world is. And if you parse it, if you do the work and look it up, you will find out that it is indeed tangible contract. I'm going to label it a pronoun. And the reason is because you see this word here, Western, in parentheses. It means it's not there. It falls under the four-quarter rule. You see a space here between W and the parentheses. And you come over here. And then if this were a straight-up written sentence, 
there would obviously be a space between this parenthesis and the E and the. So that's a double space because you see it's single spaced here everywhere else. So that's a break in the continuance of the evidence. So this world basically is standing by itself, a standalone pronoun, tangible contract. The is non-tangible contract. Of is non-tangible contract. So the is going to be a verb. And not only is it going to be a verb, it's going to be a dangling participle verb because of that break in the continuance of the evidence. And there, a verb cannot exist in a fictitious conveyance of grammar unless it's being modified by an adverb. And of is indeed an adverb. And again, and is a verb. The is a non-tangible contract adverb. And is a non-tangible contract conjunction. Sabotage is a tangible contract pronoun. Nord Stream is a tangible contract adjective. And Newsreel is a tangible contract standalone pronoun because this colon functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. Now you may ask, Jason, how can there be a pronoun on the port side of the conjunction and an adverb on the starboard side of the conjunction? How is that going to work? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I'll tell you exactly how it works. A conjunction in the fiction can serve as a bridge between verbs, adverbs, adjectives, pronouns, or any of the five syntax scenarios. And in this case, it is serving as a bridge between the syntax scenario 3-4 and the syntax scenario 1-2. Got it? Good. Let's move on to meme of the week. I thought this was pretty funny growing up in the... Well, I grew up in a very heavily wooded area on a dirt road. And this is definitely true. Deer just... Uh, the poor little creatures, man. I don't know what they'd be thinking. Bonus meme of the week, as you all may or may not know. I love felines, and this is also true. This is also super funny, I thought. So for this week's cognitive conspiracy, we'll call it, I decided to do a little brief look at an individual named Phil Schneider, who was born 1947 and passed away in 1996 at age 48. Now, he was cremated, ashes given to a family and friend. Now, when I looked up Phil Snyder on Google, it was so hard to get any information about how the guy died. About looking up a simple obituary, couldn't find a cause of death anywhere. Literally anywhere. I had to backdoor it and come into this old website, website called... Uh, Bibli, Bibli, O, T, Cup, I can't say that word, <laughs> whatever it is, you see it there. This website's been around, around a long, a long time. And this is where I got the information about Phil Snyder for this. Uh, it says he died on January 17, 1996, reportedly strangled by a catheter found wrapped around his neck. Bizarre death being dismissed by the authorities as suicide. And I do remember this. I remember when this guy was out there doing seminars and talking about all kinds of stuff about the Dulce Wars and aliens and and things like that in underground bases, dumbs. And of course, the Denver International Airport. Uh, there's a famous interview with a, a woman named Alex Christopher, which is actually where I came to Phil Snyder. Whenever that interview was first published, I read it, and boy, it really captured my imagination, literally, because back then I was very conspiratorial-minded, and I was into these types of things. And he did say, as he was doing these uh, public speaking dates, that if he was ever found to have committed suicide, 
that he had been killed for sure. And if you go by this, which is the only thing I could find on the internet, giving information about his death, then obviously <laughs> um, that probably was not the way it is reported. We can say that. So he made some statements before his death. He was a self-taught geologist, which explains his experience with the, the dumbs, which he helped build. Uh, he talked, as I said, he talked about aliens, uh, the Dulce Wars, where aliens in the U.S. military had a battle. He said, "If I ever commit suicide, I've been murdered." Okay, here's some accusations that he made. He said the the government concluded a treaty with gray aliens in '54. It's called the Granada Treaty. Space shuttles been producing special alloys in orbit. A vacuum is needed for creation of these special metals, therefore justifying mandate for large permanently manned space station. Much of our stealth aircraft technology is developed by back engineering crashed, crashed alien craft. AIDS, population control virus. Unbeknownst to just about everyone, the U.S. government has an earthquake device. Uh, the World Trade Center bomb blast and the Oklahoma City blast were achieved using small nuclear devices. The melting and pitting of the concrete and extrusion of metal supporting rods indicated this. His forte was explosive. We have become instead a technocracy, technocracy ruled by a shadow government intent on imposing their own view of things on all of us. Whether we like it or not. We got to say, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at things objectively... A lot of what he says is quite possible. Not provable, but possible. And especially what he said there about the World Trade Center. And remember, he passed away in 1996. What he said about the World Trade Center sort of foreshadows what was to come. Well, enough said about that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this video does when it goes through the YouTube algorithms. As I've mentioned uh, in my community post, which I highly recommend you check out the community section of this YouTube channel, every single video of mine that has been flagged or restricted in some way, I have challenged YouTube on every single one and every single decision that they've made to restrict my videos has been overturned in my favor. Every single one. So let's, let's see how, how it happens with this. If you'd like to become a member of this channel, you can see this button over here. If you go to the main page, click that button. There are two tiers. Choose the second one if you want a little extra content uh, for your value. I appreciate either of them. It helps keep this vessel afloat. If you're interested in learning correct set structure communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you can, of course, contact me at the email address screened at the bottom of your picture there. <clears throat> and... Uh, I'll set you up a video console. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And I'm going to be adding some more things to this new show. Hopefully to make it a little bit more compact. Maybe perhaps not rely so much on the syntaxing. But throw some other things in there as well. Hope everybody out there stays safe. And uh, if I have one thing that I could imbue to everyone out there watching this right now is be kind. In other words, the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace in a position of peace and neutrality. Good night, everyone. See you next week.